Welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to video number two uh, of our series of videos where we're talking about ship packaging. Today we're going to be talking uh, about an introduction to IC packaging. My name is Alonso and we're going to take a look at the supply chain for IC packages uh, and how this supply chain uh, modeled what types of chips we use. Uh, hope you enjoy the video. So at first we're going to look into the different players for the supply for the supply chain. The first one being the foundries. So the foundries are the big semiconductor manufacturers. Basically what they do is they turn sand into silicon and they make these big silicon wafers that we can see in the picture here. Uh, and then here the chips will be printed uh, with photosensitive layers to print the circuit into the silicon and then they will be cut and each of those will be a die for, for an IC chip. And all of this happens inside the fabs. Uh, the foundries are the ones that have the fabs. The fabs are very expensive. They can cost several billions of dollars. It's not uncommon to spend that much in a fab. So if you're going to make one, you better know that you're going to sell. Otherwise, it could be a bad financial decision. And the main thing about the fabs is that they, besides all the technology they need to, to make the chips, they need to have a thing they call a clean room, which is a room where they have basically super clean air to make sure there's no dust, there's no pollution in the air because a single speck of dust, uh, if it fell on one of these circuits, it could ruin the entire thing. So basically these companies just make these silicon wafers, they, they do the circuits, they manufacture them, but then they sell them to other companies that do the designing and the marketing for them. So they just take care of the manufacturing part of the process. Some of these main foundries are uh, TSMC, Global Foundries or UMC. And another name for these companies that do just the manufacturing is uh, Pure Play or Pure Play Foundries. So who does the designing? The designing is up to the fab list. The name is pretty self-explanatory. They have no fab. Uh, there are usually smaller companies that don't have either a budget to build the whole thing or sometimes they're just companies that decide not to go into that part of the industry and they just focus on to the, the design aspect. But also, besides designing and then sending their designs to the fab list, they are the ones that market the chips and end up selling the chips. And examples of uh, fab list companies will be Silinx, NVIDIA, or Qualcomm. So they're not necessarily small companies, um, but they just they do not take care of the manufacturing part. And these type of companies became really popular after pure play foundries started coming up. Uh, because in, in earlier days, uh, foundries used to do the entire process. Uh, they would make their own wafers and package their own chips. But uh, as the industry evolved, so these pure play foundries came up and so it was easier to start a semiconductor company, uh, just a fabulous company that would do the design and and buy the wafers from, from more companies like TSMC or Global Foundries. So then, what happens with the packaging? Because sometimes foundries can do a little bit of packaging, but not all of it. Uh, what usually happens is they outsource the packaging to the OSATs, or OSATs. Uh, it stands for Outsourced Assembly and Test Companies. Uh, and they, they just offer packaging services, basically. The, they work for fabulous foundries, but they sometimes also help with uh, overload from other companies. Like I mentioned earlier, there's companies that do the entire process from top to bottom. They will do their manufacturing and their packaging. But if they have too much in their hands, they will outsource the packaging to these OSET companies. Uh, so currently they do about 37% of, of uh, worldwide packaging. The problem with OSET companies is that at, they're at the back end of the chain. So if there's a lot of demand, they will get a lot of work and they will get a lot of things to do. But if the market is not as fast at the time, then they will feel the consequences the first. Um, they are very different from one another actually because foundries are very clear on what they do but uh, OSETs are very different from one another so some companies uh, work not only with one but with several OSETs at the same time depending on what their packaging needs are so maybe some companies better with 3D maybe some companies better with uh, flip chip BGA or BGA different types of advanced packaging they not all of them do the same um, so so sometimes uh, they differ from each other and some notable OSATs can be ASC, Incorporated, Amcor, or JCET. 
Um, finally, the last player uh, are the integrated device manufacturers or manufacturers or IDMs. These are the guys that I said they do all of it. They are playing on their own league. They don't care about the rest of the industry. They have a full vertical integration. They take over the design, they manufacture the chip, and they package it and sell it. Um, and this is a very traditional approach to the market. Like I said, in the earlier days, foundries were like this. But since the Pure Play foundries came up, uh, we the, the name was given to these companies of integrated device manufacturer to to differentiate a little bit from Pure Play foundries. And so some uh, c uh, main companies that are IDMs will be Intel, IBM, or Texas Instruments. So how does this all tie together? Uh, the big picture is that the IDMs do all the work for themselves and they don't need anyone else. Uh, sometimes they will outsource packaging to the OSATs, but they don't need the OSATs really. Um, so that is one path that the supply chain can take, but the other one is where the other players come in, which the Fabless will first do the design based on the customer's needs. Uh, then the foundries will manufacture the chip according to to the design that the Fabless sent them, and then the OSATs will help do the package. And uh, however, with all of this, uh, the market is changing, and obviously companies are trying to improve their benefits and they're trying to get increase their market. So foundries have been uh, starting to do packaging as well, and uh, they've been getting into the OSATs domain. Now this is tricky because the OSATs cannot afford to get into the foundries domain because, like we said the fabs are very expensive so uh, uh, like a nose company cannot afford to get into into foundries but the founders have started doing packaging um, however there's probably not going to be one single winner from this from this war and most likely what will come out of it is just a, a price war that will benefit the rest of the industry by lowering some of the prices so how does this supply chain affect the types of packages that, that we're getting um, and we're going to see that in just a second. So we first start by talking about single die packaging. Uh, in the 1970s, it was traditional forms of packaging, and all of those packages included one single die in the package. Uh, it was in the form of PGA, BGA, DIP, QFPs, uh, you name it. If you don't know what those are, we talked about this in the first video, and you should check that out. And those things, those packages had one single die, usually one function. However, uh, when more functionality was required for a smaller space, uh, a new type of chip came up, which uh, they called SOC or System on Chip. And these chips still are single die, but within a single die they managed to fit uh, different functions. Uh, you know, they can have anal analog circuits, digital circuits, optical circuits. This System on Chip, uh, for the first time, manages to get a single a single s a whole system into the single chip uh, and it can have most of the components of a computer it can have the processor the memory inputs outputs DSPs you name it and they were optimized for power usage for power efficiency uh, minimized waste heat and minimized latency because the design is very compact uh, all of it fits into one single die so the communication between the different systems is very short and therefore very fast um, the key thing for the system on chip and the way it relates to the to the supply chain is that while it is manufactured in the foundries because they're the ones that deal with the silicon wafers, they are designed by the fabless. Their design is so complex uh, that it can only be made at the fabless. Foundries had no way to to design these chips, so they they would just do the work for the fabless. Um, the few disadvantages from this chip is that it has no possible upgrading or repairing. Uh, once the chip is done, it's done and there's no going back. And it also has a lower yield because of the high complexity of circuits. Uh, these chips, since they're so compact, they're commonly used in mobile computing. Uh, and one of the examples is Qualcomm Snapdragon, which is a mobile processor used for some popular Android devices. So what happened with system on chip? Uh, it was good, but the foundries the foundries weren't entirely happy because they had no say in the design process. It was all up to the fabulous. So the foundries and the OSATs came into into agreement and they came up with a way to get into the design process, a way that could actually give them some power. And the solution for that was multi-chip module or MCM. First developed in the 80s, it was their solution to multifunctionality. 
but in with the, in this case the design was a lot more simple and and it gave them the opportunity the founders and the OSATs to actually get into the design process so the way multi-chip module works it's the first step towards 2.5D technology it would get different chips and it would st uh, they would stack them horizontally onto a substrate um, and they can get different ICs uh, different chips uh, homogeneous and heterogeneous into a single substrate to create multifunctionality. Now it's not as compact as SO SOC but it does have a much more simple design. Uh, it offered more functionality, higher yield than SOC because like I said more simple it was easier to make and it, 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 it was a higher price but the foundries didn't really care that much about this because this is how they could finally get you know into the design process so it was it was worth it for them so multi-chip module uh, started like that and then it evolved into system in package uh, now system in package is the real you know it, it started with a wire bond technology but uh, it's still used nowadays and it's evolved into 2.5 D and 3 D technology um, it, it be with the use of uh, the uh, silicon substrate which is handled by the by the foundries and also with uh, the use of through silicon vias. Um, basically what the system package does is it stacks ICs horizontally and vertically and then it uses an interposal layer to connect all of those devices together. Um, it has the highest density of transistors that we've seen up until now because it stacks them vertically so it can fit way more transistors per unit of area has a lot of advantages between them among them we have a simple design and verification process we have a low time to market because it's easier to design than SOC an increased yield again because of higher simplicity and optimized cost size and performance so these chips are uh, these chips are all around great um, they contain not only active devices but also passive passive components like uh, resistors capacitors inductors they can have those uh, spread out through the substrate and connected and basically we can think of these as a tiny PCB all inside of one single chip which means that with this fun multifunctionality we don't really need a full PCB uh, we could just get a, one of these chips to one of these chips to do it and because uh, the ICs are interconnected amongst them or through the interposer we no longer need a PCB underneath to solder all of those components and then the final step for this would be system on package. Now system on package evolves from SAP and it's a technology that's still in development. Uh, and the main difference is that it will have the passive components embedded into the substrate, embedded into the package itself instead of having them laying around. Uh, it will be into the package substrate. Uh, and as well as it can have other components on the, on the top like other SAPs or SOCs mounted. So it's just a very high density of not only transistors but components and that's the key here uh, because it follows the more than more. It doesn't follow the Moore's law in, in, anymore. It's not only about the number of transistors. In this case it's more about uh, the number of uh, functions or components per centimeter cube. And this is the, the highest technology we can see here for example how they have a capacitor over here which is very nice. Uh, embedded into the substrate as well as different chips over the top. So let's take a quick recap here uh, to see what we talked about. First we have the supply chain. Uh, you know we have the supply chain has to go through different stages, design, manufacturing, packaging and customer services. In the case of the uh, integrated device manufacturers they do the entire thing by themselves. They might outsource to the OSATs but overall they can do it all. However in the other model, in the other path for this supply chain. Uh, we have the different players, the fabulous uh, semiconductor companies do the design and then they send that design to the foundries which do the manufacturing. They make the silicon wafers, print the circuits into the silicon um, and then sometimes the foundries can do some of the packaging but then usually the packaging and testing is outsourced to the OSATs. And then it all comes back to the fabulous companies which are the ones marketing the product. Uh, and then in terms of different chips that we saw uh, that were affected by the by the supply chain we started the first multifunctional chip was SOC 
which had a complete system on a chip. This was fully designed by the fabless companies. So, so in order to circumvent that, the foundries and the OSETs came up with MCM, or multi-chip module, uh, where they had interconnects between components laid in a horizontal manner, uh, unified through a substrate. Uh, after that, the natural evolution to that was SIP, where they started stacking the chips not only horizontally, but also vertically. And then the final step to that evolution was system on package, where they included the passive components into the substrate and they included some extra components over the top so it's just a lot of things happening into a single chip so that's a that's a good overview of uh, how the industry has evolved and how the supply chain has modeled the different package types that we have nowadays uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video hope you guys learned a lot and uh, I will see you in video number three for more package chain technology goodbye